Hey, mount like eagles higher in the sky, and you'll find things look so different when you fly. Do I sing it? Rise and soar into the sunlight rays. Using both your wings of prayer and praise Mount like eagles Higher in the sky And you'll find things look so different two more things, which means about 12. <laughs> the eagle flies higher than any other bird. They fly toward heaven. The unaided eye cannot follow the eagle. He's out of the sight of the natural man. He goes where the natural man can't go. The eagle is the spiritual Christian who refuses to live by the laws of the natural man or the carnal Christian. When he sets out he wants to go as high as it is possible. They say they hear an eagle take off with a scream. It's one of the most exciting noises of all, in all of nature. For when he takes off from that rock and grabs himself an air current and starts to circle ever higher and higher on those wings of the wind, on those mighty blasts of glory, as he goes higher and higher, he has one destiny in view, and that is to get up when the air is rare and the sun's sight is unimpeded by cloud or smog. He wants to get up and look into the sun. And on the way up, there's a lot of old black crows sitting on the telephone. <laughs> And they say, ka, 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 why don't you stop by here for a while? We'll give you the latest dope on the pastor. Ka, 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 we got some juicy stuff on the secretary. Ka, 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 we can really give you some juicy gospel about a church down there. Ka, 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 he said, you old black devils, you hang on to your gossip. I'm going up higher. <laughs> Told you I'd get around to some other birds. The eagle has no time for carnal birds. The eagle does not lend his ears a garbage can to the squawking of crows and the twittering of sparrows. He's destined, it's in his bones. He's got cylindrical bones. It's built into the nature of an eagle Christian to go high. And so he flies and flies as he mounts the wings of the wind. You see, he has two sets of eyelids. He's got one set that he uses when he's down on the ground. He's got another set that when he's going into the sun, he drops them over to enable him to look into the rays of the sun. There are some Christians that are so spiritual, they're no earthly good. They're just so spiritual. They're a pain in the neck, that's what they are. <laughs> uh, 
A normal Christian is a man who conducts his normal daily life in a secular world with honesty, with decency, with joy, with right interpersonal relationships and responses. A Christian is a man who is a representative of Christ in the marketplace, in the office. He's a man who is normal in every way that we mean normal in a Christian context. But he is a man who, when he comes into the realm of the Spirit, can move clean out of the realm of the natural man into the realm of worship and ministry unto God, and he can fly into the sun. A lot of Christians think if you're going to be that spiritual, you, you shouldn't go to the grocery store. I'll never forget Dr. Price toward the end of his life. He said, some people ask me what I do with the money that I get from the sale of my books. He said, I don't know what people think I'm like. He said, sometimes I buy an ice cream cone. <laughs> I don't know what I expected as a young man starting to travel the world. I had read many books. I had books in my libraries by authors that I was going to meet in my travels. I don't know what I expected. I remember when I met Halsby, who wrote the famous book on prayer, who was a member of parliament in the Norwegian parliament. I don't know really what I expected, but I didn't expect to see a gentleman who needed a haircut and whose mustache needed trimming, whose tie had a gravy spot on it and whose shirt collar hadn't been ironed, and who had a blue serge suit on that hadn't been to a dry cleaner in the Lord knows how long. And I thought, could this be the man who wrote the book? And then I remember when I met Levi Petrus, the pastor of the 5,000-member church in Stockholm. I thought, he, you know, he was going to be kind of a demigod. He'd be half God and half man. And I, I, met, I remember when I met him, he said, I want to take you out and show you my garden. So he went out and showed us his beets and his corn and all the rest of it. And on the way back to town, he said, let's stop and get a drink of pop. I thought, Levy Petrus drinks pop? <laughs> Isn't it strange, the ideas we have of spirituality? You know. Some people are so spiritual, they think it's a sin to breathe. Sometimes I think it's a sin they breathe, too. <laughs> Just a word about the way the eagle fights. The eagle's main enemy is the serpent. The serpent loves to wind its way up and get into the nest while the eagle is off on a prey hunting trip and get in and either get at the eggs or get at the little eaglets. And when that eagle comes home and finds that serpent, there are two ways he or she has of dealing with that serpent. One way is she takes that great beak and she pecks him to death. She just pecks him to death. She pecks him to death with a word, just pecks him to death. Other times, she just picks him up in that same beak and she moves out over a great craggy area of rocks and she picks out a nice jagged one and she just goes. <laughs> now either you can beat the devil with the word of God or just drop him on Jesus. He'll take care of it. <laughs> when the eagle is free, he's a clean bird, but you put him in a cage and he's the dirtiest bird there is. A Christian, when he's free, is clean. A lot of preachers think that you've got to have a Christian all tied up in do's and don'ts. That makes a dirty bird out of it. Now, I, 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 don't, I don't like to really say this, but I'm going to do it anyway. I told you the other night about my background in the Holiness Church, and I don't want this to sound unkind. But I'm going to tell you something. When you put yourself under a lot of external laws and rules and regulations that you can't keep, one of two things happen. Either you become so despairing that you quit, or you become a hypocrite and pretend you're doing what you're not doing.